Hello everybody, my name is Hyder Sam. I make Y4 Meta content and in today's video, I'm gonna bring you kind of an in-depth, advanced, all-around Shenhe guide. Shenhe is the newest five-star crowd support that MiHoYo has released to us and honestly has blessed the community with her presence. And I just wanna let y'all know, Shenhe has overthrown the queen herself, Lisa, and is now first place in this culture topic of pixels. So round of applause if you're at home and you're a Shenhe haver. Also, don't forget to smash the like button, guys, because it really helps out the channel. It really helps boost the video. And it only takes a fraction of a second. And if you enjoy live content, don't forget to follow my Twitch. Link in the description down below. But now that the important stuff is out of the way, let's get into it. Shin Hu can perform five consecutive normal attacks, and unfortunately, her skill percentages for her normal attacks are really low. They're actually one of the lowest in the game for any polearm user. Even my level 9 Rosaria has a better skill percentage with her normal attacks than Shin Hu. It's pretty sad, but it is what it is, and you really don't want to do any normal charge attacks with Shin Hu. Shin Hu's elemental skill, Spring Spirit Summoning, it has two versions, a press and a hold. When you press Shin Hu's elemental skill, you're going to dash forward, kind of like Zhao, and you're going to give your whole party Icy Quills. Icy Quills are basically a damage boost to your character's normal charge, plunging, elemental, and elemental burst cryo attacks. If they're not cryo, Icy Quills are not going to buff them at all. And that is very important to realize. And so what that means is if you have Chong Yung and you infuse anyone with Cryo, they can get these Icy Quill boosts. If you have Kazuo in the party and you swirl, you can get those Icy Quill boosts because technically those like swirl infusions or whatever, they count as Cryo attacks. So any character is able to do Cryo damage in whatever situation, they will get these Icy Quills. So when you press it, you get five. And when you hold it, she's going to dash back. She's going to leave like her freaking Booba ghost there. It's gonna do more damage, but this time you're gonna get seven instead of five. But the trade-off is it has a longer cooldown. So that's something to know whenever you're doing your rotations. So essentially, if you press her elemental skill, you give your whole party a total of 20 Icy Quills, because five times four is 20. If you hold it, you're gonna give your whole party 28 Icy Quills in total. So what this means is however many enemies you hit with her elemental skill, that's how many Icy Quills you're gonna consume right off the bat with Shen He. This also means that you don't have to hit an enemy to get those Icy Quills. So if you're like charge attacking with Ganyu from far away and you hold Shen He's elemental skill, you're going to get those Icy Quills and do that damage from far away. There's a lot of enemies and you do like a Ganyu charge attack and you know how she does like AoE with her bloom damage? Well, she can essentially just freaking consume all her Icy Quills at that moment as well. Also, the last thing I will say about Icy Quills is that the damage bonus is a flat damage bonus and it doesn't depend what part of your character is doing the crowd damage. It's all going to be the same for each stack. The only thing that affects icy quill damage is your crit damage or any type of damage bonus like crowd damage bonus or for example the amos bow damage bonus that's coming from my ganyu if you want to know the detailed math behind it here's tenten's video explain it but basically the gist is everyone gets the same flat damage bonus from shenha's attack but if you want more damage on your icy quills it can only get boosted by the character's crit damage or any type of damage bonus and one more time because i messed up in the previous video it doesn't matter if my ganyu's charge attack is proccing the icy quill if her elemental skill is or her freaking celestial shower it's all gonna add up to the same amount of icy quill damage per rotation which basically means you just want to get rid of your icy quills as fast as possible so that way you're ready for the next rotation of your shenha's elemental skill sorry i kind of rambled on about icy quills but it's probably the most complicated thing about shenha and her kit the main purpose of the burst is basically to lower the resistance of your enemies whether it's cryo or physical it does have some damage over time and the good thing about her burst is that it actually snapshots so if you don't know what snapshotting it is the moment you cast her burst that burst will take whatever stats she has at that instant and just keep applying it for the whole duration so that's something to note about her burst what i don't like about this burst is that the freaking duration is too short and the cooldown is too long and then of course the big energy cost which means you're gonna have to pump some energy recharge into this character in order for you to keep up that burst consistently. Now I'm gonna talk about Spirit Communion Seal as well, her passive talent at Ascension 4. A lot of people get confused by this. This is its own thing, this is separate. This damage bonus is on whatever damage. It does not have to be Cryo. The only thing that has to be Cryo is the Icy Quills. If you press her elemental skill, you're gonna give everybody, they don't have to be Cryo units. You're gonna give everybody elemental skill and elemental burst damage by 15%. It is the same type of damage boost you would get from like a Mona burst, except for Shenha, it's an elemental skill passive talent. But essentially, if you combine these two elemental skills, the most value comes from whenever you're doing it for Cryo characters. The way I like to think about it is for Ayaka, I'm gonna press her elemental skill so that way I can increase Ayaka's elemental skill and elemental burst damage because that's where most of her damage comes from. If I'm using Ganyu, then I'm going to hold it because most of Ganyu's damage comes from her charge attacks. 
So that's the way I like to think about it. And since we're on the subject of her elemental burst, her passive talent, they fake embrace, whoever's in that field is going to gain a 15% crowd damage bonus. This is basically almost the same thing as Ganyu's passive talent where party members gain 20% crowd damage in her burst AOE. And her last passive talent is you get 25% more rewards whenever you dispatch on a Lee UA expedition for 20 hours. Alright, so for Shenha artifacts, if you're going full on support, two piece Shimanawa, two piece gladiators is the way to go. That way you can boost up your attack as much as possible to give those icy quill buffs. A four piece Bestrayer set is the way to go. That way you can focus on your crit damage, especially if you're using her in like in a freeze team or something. My personal favorite is like a hybrid build between support and DPS. So in my build, I run Shimanawa and Emblem of Serrated Fate 2-piece, two 2-piece. Two you can even run a 4-piece Emblem of Serrated Fate if you're just focusing on your burst damage. But I personally don't like that. And since we're talking about builds, let me go ahead and talk about what kind of substats you need to go for. If you're going full-on support, you can go for attack percent, attack percent, attack percent. The only thing I would tell you is you need energy recharge in your substats. Since Shenha's burst costs 80, it's going to be hard to get that burst up a lot. And all of her value comes from her burst. If you're going full on support, you could go for attack percent, attack percent, but just make sure you get the energy recharge substats as well. And if you can't get the energy recharge from your substats, then go ahead and just put the sand piece as energy recharge because this is the only slot that you can actually get energy recharge from. Personally, for me, since I'm running a hybrid build, I'm running a crowd damage bonus cup. I've been really enjoying it for my Shenha build, and I can kind of talk about it more whenever I get into the teams. And the suggested energy recharge that you should go for is somewhere in between 140 and 160 depending on who you have on your team. Say if you have Diona so you can help battery her. And if you don't have Diona, then you're going to need a little bit more energy recharge. But like all Genshin Impact questions, it just depends. Me personally, I have 162 energy recharge and I've been liking this. It feels like a sweet spot for me and I'm able to get her burst up consistently when I need it. But you do your own testing for whatever team you use Shenha on. Everyone has a different account. Just make sure you balance your substats appropriately. For Shenha's weapons, honestly, any five star is good. And ironically, I would say the Staff of Homa is the one I would pick last. Let me tell you why. Of course, you can't go wrong with her signature weapon, the Calamity Queller. Engulfing Lightning is really good because it has an energy recharge stat. And since you need energy recharge on Shenha in order to get her burst up consistently, since you're going to pack on energy recharge, you're going to increase her attack as well. Scoured Spine is also a good option. It has a high base attack and has energy recharge as a subset as well. You could use Primordial Jade Spear if you got unlucky on the weapon banner. And you can also use the Vortex Vampire because of its attack percent substat. And I'm not saying Staff Homo is bad, but you can use it. I would just prioritize energy recharge weapons over, you know, the other ones. But since I have like good energy recharge substats from my artifacts, I'm pretty comfortable using like the Calamity Queller or if I had the Vortex Vanquisher, I would, I would use that as well. Now as far for the 4 star weapons, if you're comfortable with your energy recharge like I am, you can go for a Lithic Spear. This is really good, it'll boost up her attack. You can also go for a Wave Raker's Fin since it has a high base attack and it's going to boost up her elemental burst damage as well. But if you're not comfortable with your energy recharge, then 100% Favonius Lance. I know it's dependent on Gacha, but if you have it, it's really good on her. That way you can help her out and generate those particles. The only thing about this weapon is that you have to build Shenha with crit rate. That way you can generate those elemental particles. For free to play options, honestly, there's not really that many. The only one that I could suggest is probably the Prototype Star Glitter, only because of its energy recharge substat. And after using her elemental skill, you do increase her normal charge attack damage by 8%, which can be good if you're trying to proc your icy quills on your own out of all the complete free to play options the prototype star glitter probably the best one personally i wouldn't use your star glitter to get a royal freaking polearm weapon whatever it is i know it has an attack percent substat but you're better off saving it for like a better black cliff weapon for some other character let's talk about how you should play shenha i think the best way i can describe shenha is basically a shadow main dps a lot of her damage is going to come from the Icy Quills. But the thing about this is you need other people to deliver it. So like Shenha is your supplier of this damage. She can deliver it on her own as well. But her value grows exponentially the more characters you have on your team that can deliver those Icy Quills as well. She can give characters 5,000, 4,000, 6,000 Icy Quill boosts. Let's just say you gave them 7 triggers. If we multiply that Icy Quill damage times 7, each character is going to give like 37,000, 33,000, 47,000. And then, of course, whatever Shenha gives to herself. If you add them up all together in one rotation, she can give 100,000 plus damage. And that's not including Shenha's elemental skill damage, her elemental burst damage, her damage duration over time with her elemental burst. Then the crazy thing about this, it's all passive. Like Shenha's not there. She's just supplying it and your other crowd units are delivering it. And that's what I mean by a shadow main DPS. The less crowd characters you have on your team, the less DPS she's 
basically pumping out per rotation. You want to abuse her icy kills the best way you can. So in a perfect world, you want to pump your characters with as much crit damage and damage bonus as possible because those are the only two things that affect your icy kill damage. And Shenha does a good job in pumping that as well. If you're able to use Spirit Communion Seal efficiently, that's an extra 15% damage bonus. If they're doing the damage within her own burst, that's another 15% crowd damage bonus. And that 30% damage bonus will get pumped into your other character's icy quill damage, which will increase damage overall. And that's what I've found to be the most successful in abusing Shenha's potential. And it doesn't matter what skill each character is using, you just want her icy quills to go off as fast as possible. Yeah, so icy quills equals stonks. This is a unique way of being a main DPS for your whole team. I actually love it. It's amazing. Shenha, Shadow main DPS. Now let's go over Shenha teams and her best teammates. Mona and Kokomi both are great partners for freeze comps. Without being biased, because I will just say I prefer Mona in general, I prefer Kokomi because she can apply Hydro better, and you can use Tenacity of the Miller to boost up your Shenha and the whole team. And she provides good healing. When I use Mona, I feel like it takes more timing and skill to consistently freeze and abuse your omen duration. If you can get past the headache of getting your rotations down perfectly, it's definitely worth it. And you can actually use Mona as your healer with the prototype Amber, which is a free to play weapon. Because like I've said before, if you're doing a freeze cut with Shenha, the only healing you need is from that prototype Amber. Aika and Ganyu are both great options if you have them already. At C0, I prefer Aika because she feels faster than Ganyu, and both characters burst last long enough for you to get two instances of Shenha's elemental skill, even if you don't have C1. Yulo is also a great option, and believe it or not, whether you build her cryo or physical, she can still fit in a Shenha team. And you can also pair her with Razor as well. For the Yulo plus Shenha video, I will be making a dedicated video after this one because I feel like it deserves its own video, but after some testing, it is very extremely viable. This team with Yula, Diona, Rosaria, and Shenha, solid team. You might have already seen it, but without going more into detail about rotations and all that, great option. Another great teammate for Shenha is honestly any 4-star crowd unit that can either proc Icy Quills off field like Rosaria or Kaya, or they can proc all the Icy Quills really fast like Diona with a sacrificial bow or Chang Yun when his elemental burst. Also, in my opinion, I think Chang Yun is one of the best 4-star options you can pair with Shenha, especially if you have him C2 because his C2 will lower the cooldowns of everyone's elemental burst and skill, which includes Shenha as well. Another great teammate is an animal slot. This could be either Kazua, Sucrose, or Venti because of their crowd control. They have Viridescent Veneer to lower the resistance, and they're also able to use Icy Quills because of their animal infusion swirls. Those attacks count as cryo attacks. If you want to take advantage of a small part of Shenha's kit, Mel Hutao or any other Pyro DPS is a viable option. I'm not recommending it too much, but it's definitely there if you want to play around with it. Reverse melt comps are also a great option, and it just depends on who you have on your team. You can do a reverse melt with Aiko or Rosaria if you really want. But in my opinion, Freeze or Mono Crowd teams are her best and easiest teams. And that's pretty much it for her best teammates that you can use for her teams. There's like so many teams you can make, which is why I'm just giving you like what are her best teammates because you can mix and match a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's going to depend on your account and who you have invested more as far as artifacts and substats. And also, before I talk about constellations, remember they are almost never worth it, especially if you're free to play. If you're somehow lucky or you're privileged enough to get these somehow, then of course they're gonna make Shenha a better character. C1 lets you use her elemental skill one more time. It's really good, especially if you're applying cryo crazy fast, like if you're doing an Ica burst, are you able to get multiple resets of Icy Quills? And the answer is no, for if you use both of them at the same time consecutively, it will not give you 10 stacks, it will not give you 14 stacks, it just resets how many stacks you currently have. I like C2, I think it's pretty good. I wish it was set of six seconds it would have been eight seconds so she can just have naturally 100 uptime but if you do want 100 uptime then you use this in a chong yung elemental skill and it would actually decrease her cooldown to make it where if you have c2 you're able to have 100 uptime but of course you need chong yung c3 increases the level of your elemental skill which is good because that means more icy kill damage more buffs for your team c4 has a potential to make shenha more of a dps because after she uses her elemental skill however many icy kills get consumed it will add to her damage for her next elemental skill so if you stop at c4 the maximum amount of stacks you can get is 28 before you're able to use the elemental skill again and i might as well jump to c6 because you already know what c5 does c5 just increases the elemental burst level c6 lets you 
have an infinite amount of icy quills but only for your normal and charge attack and this is the only way you're able to get 50 stacks for your c4 if i had to only pick one constellation of a good stopping point it'd probably be c2 but remember constellations are never worth it especially when there's future characters coming out now i want to talk about is shenha worth it if i'm being honest only if your waifu over meta because if you're an account that needs a big boost i would honestly wait for kazuha or some other type of character like that shenha is a luxurious support you don't need her but you need her you know what i mean i love her so much she's so fun i don't care if she's kind of niche to cryo she just does a really good job fulfilling that role of support and can pump out that dps she's kind of the kazuha to like cryo characters except kazuha can be in any team not just cryo so there's that. But if you pulled her, then gosh darn, you're ready to do some crazy stuff. I hope you enjoyed the guide. If you're interested in waifu over meta content that goes for showcases, theory crafting, team ideas slash combos, then go ahead and turn on the notification bell and subscribe to my channel because that is the best way to support me for free. And those likes and subscriptions go a long way for the YouTube algorithm. I do have a couple more videos I want to make about Shenha. I want to make a showcase slash a little bit of a guide of her paired with Yula. And I also want to make a dedicated DPS Shenha showcase, hopefully when I pull C4. Anyways, I love you all so much. And remember, waifu over meta. And I'll see y'all in the next video.